Well, it's, uh, it sounds, uh, you know, funny, but it's like a dream come true, you know? You grow up watching uh, shows on HBO and you don't really think that you're going to end up being on that channel, you know? And it's, it's crazy <laughs> surreal. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy and I'm really honored, especially since I'm working with these guys, you know? That's a <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. And um, it's also my first time to work with Eric Mackey, so it was it was um, it, it felt like an adventure, actually, because um, uh, first of all, the location was very it was very beautiful, it's very picturesque, and uh, um, I I think he also chose the location primarily because of the food. So you know, um, just being there. It was it was it, it was like an immersion as well. Diba? Actually, isang malaking karangalan na makatrabaho si Delegate Eric Mati. Alam naman natin siya sa pinakamahusay na director. At kakaiba itong project na ito din mo, it's viewer. Kaya nung binigyan ako ng pagkakataon na, na makatrabaho, sabi ko, yes. Uh, miski busy ako sa trabaho dito sa Maynila. Eh, ginawa ko talaga ng paraan para makasama sa project na ito. Miski pabalik-balik ako ng si pa, ano ng Si Palay, Manila, hindi ko inantala yung uh, pamasahe, miski mahal yung pamasahe, uh, okay lang. Actually, miski walang bahay to, okay lang. Wow. <laughs> I mean, uh, Parang maraming follow-up questions to that. <laughs> so, go ahead, go ahead. Ayan lang, masaya lang ako na naging party kasi pangalawang trabaho ko na rito kay Tarek Eric Mate. Una yung horror, ngayon pagkain naman. At nakakatawa dahil ito pagkain, ang sasarap ng pagkain, di ba? At saka ang sarap magluto. At uh, sarap din kumain ng uh, masasarap. Kaya pagkatapos ng uh, shoot namin nun, pagkatapos na yung kailangan yung pagkain sa eksena, kakain. Saka masarap. Miski na pili, ano, sa pelikula eh. Talagang pinasarap nila yung props na pagkain. Talagang pagkatapos ng uh, shooting, talagang masarap din ang kainan. Kami nila ba siya, may best. Ako si Mas Anjali, siyempre number one, like when they said HBO Asia, parang wow, I don't know, at lang ako ng HBO shows, siyempre yes. And then I, I really like, it's my second time working with Derek Eric and so far I really enjoyed yung experience ko working with him. And then this one, nalaman ko pa na it's about food. And of course, he's from Bacolod, so alam na natin na, ah, ito, alam niya yung he knows what he's doing kasi food is, you know, I'm, and I'm a foodie also. So, actually, nung first time namin nag-meet for the story conference, and then pinipitch, pinapakita ni Derek more or less kung ano yung mga papakita kong food in the movie, I was already super excited kasi just for, just being there and enjoying all of this food and Parang sabi nga ni Anjali, immersion siya eh. Dahil syempre, nakikita mo yung culture ng mga tao um, through their food. Plus, yeah, the, the location was really far. We didn't have signal or like, ano. So parang it was like, bonding talaga. Like, I really enjoyed with the cast and the crew. As in, parang malakas yung attachment ko sa inyo. So every time, I'm, like when I was watching earlier, I was remembering yung bang shooting the scene. So, kahit sobrang simple ng eksena for me, ang ganda ng memories na kasama ng shoot, yeah. Um, we were surprised because we we thought HBO was just gonna launch it. And then I received uh, an, a, a message from Eric Ku, the showrunner. Uh, he, he sent uh, a few of the episodes to the Tokyo International Film Fest and they eventually picked uh, our episode, uh, the pilot episode for Food Lore and uh, the Vietnam episode and uh, I'm happy. I, I have another film in in Tokyo as well so. Direct, I wanted to ask like how did I understand Eric, Eric who the showrunner chose the directors who wanted to work with? How did the collaboration take place and how, why did you choose Sipala, Cartagena Island as the location? Uh, what's great about Food Lore is, uh, and I think all the other series with, with HBO, is when we were tapped, we were asked what kind of food story we want. 
and um, we had several permutations. But a lot is riding on a food story with Filipinos because uh, we're the most un-Asian in the Asian region. I mean, we're more Spanish, we're more uh, Latin American rather than Asian-Asian. So those are the things that we took into consideration. Uh, the first questions we asked when we were writing the script was, what do we want to know about uh, the Philippines that the international audience would also be excited to know about? And for one, I said we have to include a fiesta. That's one. Uh, number two, it's it's how food brings together communities. Right? Uh, with ours, because it's a communal thing. Right? We, we are like the Spanish who, when we start eating, uh, we, we take hours just talking on the table and uh, we're not like the Japanese where it's more ritualistic, where and dami nilang one. Atin, family style, the food is family style, everyone digs in and it's the conversations on the table that really matters. So those are things that we considered. Then the next one was, What's the most identifiable Filipino story uh, that, that we can have? So we, we chose the diaspora of the Filipinos. Uh, with this one, she just came from Manila, but eventually she's going to end up in Hong Kong in the story. So uh, we felt that that would be universal enough, but it's something that also Filipinos would, would uh, relate to. Uh, and also, we didn't want to do. Uh, we we want a very aspirational Filipino food movie, mm -hmm. aspirational where it will inspire people to know our food a little more, and to see what kind of celebratory life we can also have. Na hindi lang naman tayo tukat lagi. We probably had forty dishes that I wanted to feature. Mm -hmm. Why, why a lot of dishes? I don't want to be regionalistic. That's uh -huh. one. I, I, I want, that's why Cartagena, it's a real place actually, but Cartagena and the Island of Dreams can also feel like any other place in the Philippines. We wanted this to be very Filipino rather than just Ilongo. Of course, we shot it in Negros, right? Pero we, we are not saying it's in Negros. Um, we're, we're saying it's any other island in the Philippines and same with the food that we chose we chose a cross-section of the best that we can have of our regional cuisine uh, we even included Chinese food <laughs> uh, so we have kare uh, kare uh, we have uh, inasal we have all sorts of, of dishes uh, just so everyone feels uh, that the show is inclusive right? and not and not just concentrating on because that's the problem we're kind of watak watak as a country right? what is the watak watak thing? divided divided scattered that uh, sometimes we're unaware that we're just uh, I mean, I, I've always dreamed of showcasing Ilongo food, but for this one, I, I thought uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't just deal with Ilongo food. That I should be inclusive of all the other dishes that, that we have. Uh, there's, there's two fiestas. The, the other fiesta, the, the more solemn one, mm -hmm. uh, and even the offering to the to the sea mm. that's that's from a place we picked that story from Pangasinan I think mm. uh, where they offer bounty to the sea during fiesta uh, while the dance parade that we had we gathered like five communities in Negros uh, one from Bacolod one from Cabangkalan uh, several and, and they were they were enthusiastic uh, the, the mayors helped us out. They were the ones who brought them in buses. 
uh, because we staged the whole of that. It, it was it. It's not like a stolen yeah. video um, footage. In as much as this episode is about food, it is also about filmmaking. I mean, in in Philippine context, and also uh, everything about our country. Uh, our country has stopped being ambitious or figuring out uh, the best. When you go to other places like Hong Kong, there's one guy who just does noodles for 80 years and he has figured out down to the last centimeter and down to the last ounce of flour what's the best chew of a noodle. Tayo, we always settle. We, 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 don't, we don't go for perfection, even if we can never get there. So, parang siya. a lot of people would like to settle. Uh, and here's Angeli who wants to see things, who want, who's curious about finding out things. And um, parang ganun siya. Diba? We have all these ideas, good ones, we 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 do good work but we we always settle for something because there's not enough money there's not enough resources there's not enough time for for research or for r d or for lagi diba? and we just equated it to food that sometimes food is just survival like if you saw the adobo sequence the reason why it's salty uh, through our research and bakit dadamihan ng sabaw uh, in the earlier yung ginawa niya yung damihan mo ng sabaw di ba? because food is for survival it's not about good taste yung parang pag maraming sabaw mabubusog yung lahat ng tao sa kahit konti lang yung sahog mabubusog yung buong bahay pag uh, maalat naman yung adobo mas madaming kanin kahit konti lang yung baboy mabubusog sila makakatulog sila maayos feeling like okay i had a good meal but that's just for survival what's the next step diba? Anong sunod? what's the next step do we make adobo better do we find the right taste for the adobo do we alam yan, do we just make enough sabaw so that we showcase the ingredient more rather than just the water watery soup uh, alam yan. so parang ganun yung panin. Uh, is there a food item used on the show that uh, resonated with you personally that maybe triggered the personal recollection of someone or something? Well, not really triggered a personal memory. More like uh, um, it, 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 the, the effort of wanting to cook a good meal for a loved one. And then... Spoiler just Are you... You're worried whether or not they will appreciate it or not. Yung, kasi there's, uh, I, all, I believe kasi when you cook, um, a lot of love goes into it, especially when you're thinking of the person who's going to eat it. So, yun yung, ano, yun yung naalala ko every time na may scenes na preparing for food, ay preparing food for loved ones, for family or for neighbors, parang, Kaya meron kaming ganun ni Betcha kasi may kanya-kanya kaming idea na ito yung masarap, ito yung gusto nila. Na nagkakaroon ng, doon nagkaroon ng conflict pero actually pareho lang naman kami ng intention. Yung ganun. So yun yung, ano, yun yung, hindi siya memory exactly pero yun yung take away ko na kapag gusto mo, pag nagluluto ka, gusto mo pasayahin yung kakain mo. Diba? <laughs> wala, wala rin akong actual yung food mismo na nag-remind Pero I guess yung, yung feeling lang ng fiesta Kasi during the, the day that we shot the fiesta scenes Para talaga may fiesta sa location So it, like, it reminded me of the few times, very few times na umuwi kami sa probinsya And all the effort is there and parang I'm always kind of nervous na baka ipag-perform ako ng nanay or tatay ko. Yung gano'n, eh, yung meron siyang gano'n feeling eh. Kasi busy lahat, tapos parang paingay ng paingay, na nag-overlap yung mga kwento habang kumakain. So it's more of 
more of that than a specific putahe. Okay. Saan siguro yung pag-iitsyon ng baboy? Parang uh, sa napupunta ko iba't ibang klase ng pagluluto nila kung paano nilulutuin yung baboy. Eh, nung bata ko, lumalaki ako na pag pang piyesta, uh, masarap panunin yung nagluluto ng baboy. At, uh, <laughs> tapos yung ano pa yung yung isang recipe batuan 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 para first time ko lang makano na ano, nilalagyan ng batuan yung baboy na, na actually pagkatapos na ano tinikman ko yung baboy masarap uh, siguro your initial reaction dun sa napanood ninyo and then uh, your personal takeaway dun sa story not necessarily with the food that was presented on the on the film but the, the whole story of uh, Island of Dreams So, parang yung sinabi po ni Ina kanina na uh, habang nanonood kami na alala namin yung yung araw ng mga yung mga araw ng shoot namin kaya kaya di ba parang wala naman nakakatawa tayo tawot ang tawot yung parang ako yung may inside joke ang ano lang ang I guess ang masasabi ko nung nag-shoot kasi kami puro puno ng pagmamahal yung set yes hindi ko ano na o um kasi at hindi, oo, ang sasabi ko talaga, ano napakabihira. Kasi kahit gusto talaga ko nang kilala si Ina, pero for some reason, ngayon lang tayo nag, ano, nag, nag, bond ng ganito. Yun, kasi siguro dala na rin ng walang signal. <laughs> ang laking bagay pala na walang signal. Tapos nasa isang lugar ka na ganun, and tapos yung tanagain ninyo, kung ano yung, premise ni Derek, nag-band din talaga kami over food. So, most in, na medyo weird kasi habang nanonood kami, yun yung naaalala namin, yung bis na yung nanonood kami talaga, di ba? At saka yung pag-day off, since lignit yung lugar, wala na may pabili ng food. So, may moment of gutom din talaga. So, yung mga, yun, ano ba? So parang yun, I guess yun din yung take away na take away ko na totoo talaga na good food brings people together and at the same time, pagbutong kayo <laughs> yung Yung parang naging adventure, ano ba, ano ba, ano sa tayo kukuha ng pagkain, yung gano'n, may, may gano'n na nagsasama talaga kayo over a need na imbis na nagkakanya-kanya kami ng harap ng pagkain yung naghahanapan muna kami, tapos, uy, ano, san, oo, nagsishare kami, whatever it is. So, yun, yung pinaka-takeaway ko, yung, yung mismo experience ng mga, yun, hindi, <laughs> hindi, pero siguro ako naman, um, kasi yung character ko dito, sobrang yung simple, sobrang, like in the story conference, ang pagkasabi pa nga yung direct Eric, yung simple ka lang, wala kang ambisyon. So for me, nag-stake na, ano, what is it like? Kasi ako, ma-ambition akong tao, si Ina. But then like, so inisip ko, paano kaya yung feeling na wala kang ambition? So yun yung, actually, yun yung na-enjoy ko din in making the film. Na being, living in a, parang, living in her shoes na simple lang. And that people can actually be really content and happy in the province or being poor. Pero yung bang minsan, Minsan yun ay, mga maliliit na bagay lang. You get attached to it and you get comfortable na. It's not really bad. Kasi parang, syempre for me, coming from, coming from where I am, Manila, yung gano'n na, I had it, I had it pretty good in my life, di ba? Pero yung bang, syempre, minsan tinitignan mo with, yung parang may awa sa, yung bang people who don't get to eat what you eat, or don't get to experience what I experienced in Manila, yung gano'n, or, traveling. Pero masarap din pala kasi minsan mas marunong sila mag-enjoy ng mga simple bagay. So yun, yun yung parang na-take away ko like doing the role. Pero yung experience talaga honestly, yun yung isa sa pinaka na, na-enjoy kong cast and crew. Like lahat kami, parang by kada and namin-miss ko sila. Like bihira ko yung ma-feel eh, na after Minsan ang tagal mong katrabaho, pero hindi mo nalimit pa after. Ito yung parang, kailan ba tayo, ano, magkaka-shoot ulit or something. So, masaya ko talaga. 
nagandaan ako na nung si ginagawa kasi namin to parang ang walang parang hindi nga nasa shooting parang trabaho lang katulad ng sinasabi nila yung cast and crew napakadaling actually parang hindi ako nag, nagsushooting walang ano mayroon lang ito sa experience na iwan lang ako ng aeroplan hindi <laughs> namin pinangano ko tapos so, yung experience ko dito yung kumain kami ng bayawa hindi mo siya nyo yun hindi mo siya nyo yun Dapat ba sa napakaganda ng trabaho, napaka-peaceful. Parang ka lang, uh, actually parang naglalaro lang. Tapos na yung director pa namin, napaka-galing. Yeah. Parang, parang uh, ibibigay niya sa'yo lahat yung kailangan mong gawin. Tapos pagka binigay mo, parang wala ka nang gagawin sa, sa sarili mo. I-acting mo na lang. But na, actually napakadali. Isa to sa pelikulang ginawa ko na tas ang bilis lang ng trabaho. Ay isang araw ang dami yung nagagawa. Tapos yung yung mga na, yung crew, ibang klase yung, ano nila, ibang klase yung crew, parang lahat sila alam na alam nila yung trabaho nila. Parang kompleto-kompleto sila pagpunta ng gera, may parang yung lahat, kompleto. At ang galing na timunan, direct Eric Mati.